let's get to this news here about Tucker Carlson. So for those who are not aware, uh, Tucker Carlson has been making waves recently because he was spotted in Russia. And of course, you know, that is considered to be a no, no by some during a time when we have the Ukraine war and the United States is in favor of Ukraine and not Russia. So people were speculating is Tucker Carlson there to interview Putin? And would that be a problem or not? We'll go to Simon Ataba here. He actually captured this video. Respondent says Tucker Carlson leaves the Kremlin after interviewing President Vladimir Putin. At this point, it was just alleged. We didn't know, you know, for sure. But you can see they're saying that that was actually Tucker Carlson uh, in that vehicle was what they believed and that he was leaving the Kremlin. So let's go ahead and check. We're walking through a sequence of events here. Here's another one from Hotspot that says Tucker Carlson leaves Russia with his recording equipment. It looks like we can expect an interview soon. I'm going to tell you, people were on it, okay? People were on this. So there's the equipment there. And there's the same vehicle, right? So neither one of those guys was Tucker Carlson, just FYI. There's the vehicle exiting there. So I want to remind you of something because before I show you what Tucker has said recently, some people are saying that, oh, well, Tucker Carlson is trying to do this now because he's not a part of Fox News. Not necessarily. Actually, Tucker Carlson wanted to interview uh, Vladimir Putin when he worked for Fox News. And if you may have forgotten, I just want to go ahead and show you the clip that reminds you about that. Check this out. The Biden administration's largest intelligence gathering agency, the NSA, had been reading my private emails. Even saying that out loud is weird. It's one of those segments we never thought we would do ever. But the country has changed that much that fast. And honestly, the whole thing was kind of shocking. The government was spying on us. Come on. It seemed crazy, but it's true. And no one in Washington appeared to be shocked in the slightest. In fact, the usual shills right after our segment had a ready explanation for it. Either it never happened at all, they said, just a cable news show lying for ratings, or there must have been a good reason it happened. And they began furiously making excuses for why the NSA did it. A powerful, heavily politicized spy agency surveilling journalists who've been critical of the regime? No problem. It's perfectly normal. Just don't call it spying. But it's not normal at all. It is third world. And as we told you repeatedly, it did happen. Now that has been confirmed. Yesterday, we learned that sources in the so-called intelligence community told at least one reporter in Washington what was in those emails, my emails. There was nothing scandalous in there, thank God. We're happy to report that. Late this spring, I contacted a couple of people I thought could help get us an interview with Russian President Vladimir Putin. See? Just a reminder for everyone, because I saw a number of people on social media and they were saying, oh, well, now he gets to do the interviews or he's going to try to interview someone that he may have wanted to, but didn't try to before because he was a part of corporate media. But just a reminder, that was not the case. When he was working with Fox News, he was actually trying to get an interview with Vladimir Putin back then. Uh, we found that out because he talked about the release uh, of his emails. I told nobody I was doing this other than my executive producer, Justin Wells. I wasn't embarrassed about trying to interview Putin. He's obviously newsworthy. I'm an American citizen. I can interview anyone I want and I plan to. But still, in this case, I decided to keep it quiet. I figured that any kind of publicity would rattle the Russians and make the interview less likely to happen. OK, so let's ask this question, what Tucker Carlson just was asking there or saying there. He said he can interview anyone that he wants. And I think as a journalist, you should be able to interview anyone that you want. However, people are not liking this at all. And I'm talking about the mainstream media pundits. You know, they have some things to say. We'll start with Jen Psaki. They really don't want this to happen. Jen Psaki believes that Tucker Carlson is trying to stay relevant. She says he is trying to stay relevant. Let's hear this bit here from Jen Psaki, this little sound bite here. Of course, Carlson is now just another far right conspiracy peddler with a show on the Internet. He's no longer on Fox, as we all know. 
And he's apparently been spending the last few days in Moscow for some reason. Who knows? We don't know why. He has to stay relevant somehow. So I guess we'll learn in the coming days. Maybe. People can say that about Jen Psaki, right? Because she was Biden's press secretary. People can say the same thing about her. Well, apparently Jen Psaki is going to actually be a commentator for MSNBC now that she has resigned from her press secretary gig. Maybe she's trying to say relevant somehow. People could have said the same thing about Simone Sanders, actually multiple times. She went from Bernie to Biden and then didn't get the press secretary job and then went to MSNBC. But anyway, the thing is, is you can see the criticism is already happening. And I want to ask you a question. What happened to the days when a journalist was actually supposed to get both sides of the story? I firmly believe regardless if there is a war, regardless which side the West is on, shouldn't we hear both sides of the story? For example, if Zelensky can have interviews on CNN and MSNBC, isn't it only fair and appropriate for Vladimir Putin to be interviewed on those outlets as well? Or are we only allowed to listen to the perspective of the West? And these are questions we have to ask ourselves. We got to ask these questions because we have CNN out here that is very upset that Tucker Carlson is in Russia and there's a possibility for him to interview Vladimir Putin. As if, again, we're not supposed to hear both sides of the story. This is because they want to maintain control of the narrative. And I think they are very worried about what Vladimir Putin could say to Tucker Carlson. This could be the first time that we actually get to hear from Putin himself in a conversation with a Western journalist, his perspective about what has happened in reference to Ukraine. And that scares the establishment that scares the military industrial complex. And I'm willing to bet that scares NATO because NATO started this war to begin with. Listen to CNN's response to this. It's the man you see here with the MAGA leader, Donald Trump, Tucker Carlson, possibly there in Moscow to interview Putin, definitely there as a Putin supporting celebrity. Just listen to how Russian state media is breathlessly celebrating his visit. Independent journalist Tucker Carlson has flown to Russia from the U.S. via Turkey to Vinukova Airport. He saw Spartacus Ballet at the Bolshoi Theater, had lunch in a nice restaurant, went for a ride around town, rode the subway. He charged his smartphone via a USB port and connected to a fast and free Wi-Fi internet. He charged his phone, although they're knowing the details about the fact that it was during USB port may give him reason to think twice about all of this. But look at them talking about him like a celebrity. Everything he does on camera, breathlessly repeated. Now, it Isn't she doing the same thing, though? This is interesting. Like she's criticizing the fact that they're giving him that type of attention. But she's also given him that same attention by covering this story. It is unclear if an interview between Putin and Carlson will take place. But if it does, it gives Putin a chance to sit down with a big supporter. It might be worth asking yourself, since it is getting pretty serious, what is this really about? Why do I hate Putin so much? Has Putin ever called me a racist? Has he threatened to get me fired for disagreeing with him? Does he eat dogs? These are fair questions. And the answer to all of them is no. Vladimir Putin didn't do any of that. I'll actually always remember watching that clip. I was standing in Ukraine 48 hours before the war began there. Well, Carlson then stood by Putin consistently all the way through. And that. Let's go back just a little bit about the Ukraine part, because I, I want to say something here. She sounds a little jealous. Oh. Vladimir Putin didn't do any of that. I'll actually always remember watching that clip. I was standing in Ukraine 48 hours before the war began there. Pause. So that's great, Aaron, that you went to Ukraine to get their perspective and to hear their voice. Did you go to Russia? Of all these interviews that we've seen with Zelensky, None of these people have tried to interview Vladimir Putin. 
why are you afraid to give us both sides of the story? I thought that's what journalism was supposed to be about. And if that's the case, what are you trying to hide from us? And Aaron comes off a little bit jealous here, almost, it seems like, right? Like, well, while you were there, I was in Ukraine doing da da da. It's really weird. It's really weird, you know? They have failed with the narrative about the Ukraine war because they wanted everyone to get on board and say, we have to push back against Russia. And some of us were over here sitting like, push back against what? They had the Minsk Accords. They actually wanted to have negotiation in the beginning, but then it was later revealed that the United States and the United Kingdom pushed back against that negotiation, which means that the United States and the United Kingdom just wanted them to go to war. So the U.S. government is involved in this. And again, it's a win for who? It's again for the weapon contractors and the military industrial complex. It's not a win for the American people. It's not a win for Ukrainian people. A lot of Ukrainians have died. So let's think about that for a second. Well, Carlson then stood by Putin consistently all the way through. And that is why he can go to Moscow now without any fear of being summarily imprisoned. He's a hero. This was Putin's mouthpiece in the United States, somebody who had turned a blind eye to the atrocities committed by Putin because they were happening far away. Once vibrant towns turned to ruins, mass graves with dozens of bodies in the Kiev suburbs. Oh, that sounds familiar. That sounds very familiar because we have the mass graves and the rubble in Gaza. You don't want to talk about that, Aaron. You were talking about the 1,200 people that were killed at the festival in Israel. Genocide in Gaza, had it not been for the protests, you wouldn't be covering that side of it at all. Us, the activists, we had to push you to talk about those things. But when those things happened to Ukraine, you could talk about that because Israel's not involved. Theater full of innocent women and children sheltering, bombed despite the giant world's children written on the roof, more than 200,000 Ukrainian soldiers killed or injured. And tonight, Putin is trying to seize on the fact that Zelensky's military appears to be in turmoil, capitalizing on a moment of intense American political dysfunction and intensifying strikes. I don't know how much they're paying this woman, but it must be a lot. OK, it must be a lot. I think Aaron is really getting paid. So as you can see, mainstream media is heavily against uh, Tucker Carlson having this interview uh, with Vladimir Putin. But it's really interesting because they didn't seem to feel this way when Barbara Walters interviewed Vladimir Putin. Granted, there wasn't the war with Ukraine during that point in time, but it was still Russia and to the United States, that's considered a boogeyman country. It always has been as long as I've been alive. And if it's not coming from mainstream media, it's coming from Hollywood through movies and TV shows where they demonize Russia and have us think that these are big red scare people and they're going to try to kill us all. I've seen this my whole life, even when I was a little kid, right? Rocky four, Rocky four. But Barbara Walters interviewed Vladimir Putin. And I don't remember mainstream media pushing back on her when she sat down and had this interview with Vladimir Putin. In fact, Barbara Walters was applauded for taking brave interviews and taking on guests like this. So what has happened? What is this really about? And I'll show you here. Here's Barbara Walters. And Putin. I would say that the United States is losing, not in the military, but in the information. It seems to me that on the information field, terrorists are acting more aggressively and more offensively, and they are presenting opposition in terms of emotions. As to the military dimension, in our assessment, things happen the way they should. I would say that the United States is... So you see this? So here's Vladimir Putin, and there's Barbara Walters. Joy Duncan says, I saw someone bring up that Barbara Walters often interviewed world leaders and controversial leaders, people, and she was called brave. Exactly. This is what I'm saying. So what has happened, folks? What has happened? Is there jealousy involved? There could be some of that. Well, Tucker Carlson finally did break the ice and decide to tell people what he is really doing in Moscow. I saw this earlier today. Uh, he is having that interview with Vladimir Putin, and he's also going to explain to you why he is deciding to do it. Listen to this. 
We're in Moscow tonight. We're here to interview the president of Russia, Vladimir Putin. We'll be doing that soon. There are risks to conducting an interview like this, obviously. So we thought about it carefully over many months. Here's why we're doing it. First, because it's our job. We're in journalism. Our duty is to inform people. Two years into a war that's reshaping the entire world, most Americans are not informed. They have no real idea what's happening in this region, here in Russia or 600 miles away in Ukraine. But they should know. They're paying for much of it in ways they might not fully yet perceive. The war in Ukraine is a human disaster. It's left hundreds of thousands of people dead, an entire generation of young Ukrainians, and it's depopulated the largest country in Europe. But the long-term effects are even more profound. This war has utterly reshaped the global military and trade alliances, and the sanctions that followed have as well. And in total, they have upended the world economy. The post-World War II economic order, the system that guaranteed prosperity in the West for more than 80 years, is coming apart very fast, and along with it, the dominance of the U.S. dollar. This piece right here is incredibly important, the dominance of the U.S. dollar. We've talked about this before with BRICS. We've talked about how other countries like South Africa and China and Russia have come together uh, as a part of BRICS. They do not want to depend on the U.S. dollar anymore. Uh, this is important. This can affect us. So when people say that foreign policy doesn't affect us over here, yes, it does. So this is important that people need to understand what could happen here with countries that are choosing to have a multipolar world. We're not a part of that. And we're not a part of that, not because we don't choose to be, we're not a part of that because the US decided a long time ago that they were going to be a dominant power. They don't really wanna have any type of horizontal uh, organization. They don't want a multipolar world. So what people have to understand with Tucker Carlson having this interview, with Vladimir Putin, it's not just a, I'm going over there because I want the popularity and all that kind of stuff. It's more so related to what he's talking about here in reference to the economy as well, which will affect us. We may be the, the biggest power, the biggest baddest or whatever around the world now, but things are changing and other countries are choosing to align with each other and push back against the United States, even if that means creating their own currency. So people have to understand that this actually does matter. This is important. And I think, if anything, I think one of the worst things that we can do as a country is to continue to paint Russia as the big, bad boogeyman, which I don't believe, by the way. And I think there's been a lot of lies that have been said about Russia. And to find a way to have some type of peace. Let's continue here. These are not small changes. They are history altering developments. They will define the lives of our grandchildren. Most of the world understands this perfectly well. They can see it. Ask anyone in Asia or the Middle East what the future looks like. And yet the populations of the English speaking countries seem mostly unaware. They think that as nothing has really changed. And they yep. think that because no one has told them the truth. Their media outlets are corrupt. They lie to their readers and viewers. And they yep. do that mostly by omission. For example, since the day the war in Ukraine began, American media outlets have spoken to scores of people from Ukraine, and they have done scores of interviews with Ukrainian President Zelensky. We ourselves have put in a request for an interview with Zelensky, and we hope he accepts. That's the part I wanted you to hear right there, because I showed you the mainstream media pundits because they're trying to make it seem like Tucker Carlson just wants to show Putin's side. I wanted you to hear that part there where he's telling you they put in a request for Zelensky as well. Sorry, I have a tickle in my throat. They put in a request to interview Zelensky as well. So that's what real journalism looks like going out there in the field and trying to get both sides. CNN isn't doing that. Fox News isn't doing that. MSNBC isn't doing that. Mainstream media is not doing that, especially in reference to war. But the interviews he's already done in the United States are not traditional interviews. They are fawning pep sessions specifically designed to amplify 
Zelensky's demand that the U.S. enter more deeply into a war in Eastern Europe and pay for it. That is not journalism. It is government propaganda, propaganda of the ugliest kind, the kind that kills people. At the same time, our politicians and media outlets have been doing this, promoting a foreign leader like he's a new consumer brand. Not a single Western journalist has bothered to interview the president of the other country involved in this conflict. That's exactly what I was the point that I was getting at. And it's the same thing. It's like even in reference to Israel and Gaza. How many times have they interviewed Netanyahu? How many times have they interviewed his advisor? His advisor has done numerous interviews, right? How many of those commentators from mainstream media have actually interviewed people from Gaza? You see what I mean? They don't want you to hear both sides. They only want you to hear the side that fits their narrative. So I think interviewing both sides, which it seems like Tucker's trying to do, I think that's actually getting back to old school journalism, like the Walter Cronkite journalism, and not just talking to the side that the West wants you to side with. Vladimir Putin. Most Americans have no idea why Putin invaded Ukraine or what his yep. goals are now. They've never heard his voice. That's wrong. Americans have a right to know all they can about a war they're implicated in. And we have the right to tell them about it because we are Americans too. Freedom of speech is our birthright. We were born with the right to say what we believe. That right cannot be taken away no matter who is in the White House. But they're trying anyway. Almost three years ago, the Biden administration illegally spied on our text messages and then leaked the contents to their servants in the news media. They did this in order to stop a Putin interview that we were planning. Last month, we're pretty certain they did exactly the same thing once again. But this time, we came to Moscow anyway. Yep. We are not here because we love Vladimir Putin. We are here because we love the United States. And we want it to remain prosperous and free. And to avoid a nuclear war, let's keep it real, because Putin has the nukes. Putin has the nukes. Is not someone you want to piss off. We paid for this trip ourselves. We took no money from any government or group. Nor are we charging people to see the interview. It is not behind a paywall. Anyone can watch the entire thing, shot live to tape and unedited, on our website, TuckerCarlson.com. Okay, so you'll be able to see the interview on his website for free. You don't have to pay for it. No paywall. You guys know I don't do paywalls on the show, but no paywall. But the other thing I want to mention too, and I want to give a warning to all of my YouTube peeps out there in the atmosphere. I would hold off showing that interview on YouTube because I have a feeling that YouTube is going to pull that. I think if anyone wants to cover that interview, maybe you should cover it on Rumble and Rockfin, but I think it would be dangerous to cover that interview with Tucker and Putin on YouTube because they're probably most likely going to pull it and they'll probably try to shut you, shut you down. Just keeping it real. Elon Musk, to his great credit, has promised not to suppress or block this interview once we post it on his platform, X, and we're grateful for that. Western governments, by contrast, will certainly do their best to censor this video on other less principled platforms because that's what they do. They are afraid of information they can't control. But you have no reason to be afraid of it. We are not encouraging you to agree with what Putin may say in this interview, but we are urging you to watch it you should know as much as you can. And then, like a free citizen and not a slave, you can decide for yourself. Thanks. So this is important. We never actually heard from Vladimir Putin why he decided to invade Ukraine. And I think it would be doing uh, damage to the American people to not actually hear uh, his side of the story. And I would say that with any conflict, I think you should hear from both sides, not just the side that the West supports. This is often why I, I think in a lot of uh, foreign conflicts, American people become uh, heavily propagandized because I go back to the war in Iraq. I remember the lie that was told to us that Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction. That was a lie. 
uh, didn't have weapons of mass destruction, but they told that lie so that we could go uh, to war with Iraq. And just imagine if journalists in the United States actually would have been permitted to interview the other side so that you heard both sides of the story, right? Something like that, something similar to that did happen during the war in Vietnam. But I told you after that war, they decided we are not going to show civilian casualties on TV in reference to war because there was a lot of unrest back home in the States when people saw those videos, when they saw the kids being killed, when they saw the women being killed. You know, a lot of those soldiers that came back from Vietnam, the ones who did make it back were called baby killers when they came back into the United States. So I think that's very important for people to understand. You should hear from both sides. And we should all be questioning why our media has been hiding that from us. They've been doing us a disservice, right? Again, because they only want us to hear one narrative. Now, here's the problem that Tucker Carlson may run into. People are already demanding that Tucker Carlson not be permitted back in the United States. Now we know this happened with Tara Reid. I interviewed Tara Reid about her situation. She went to Russia to publish her book in multiple languages. Then she was told not to come back to the United States or she may be detained. You know, Tara Reid still has her allegations against President Biden. Now we have people like Bill Kristol coming after Tucker Carlson for the same, says perhaps we need a total and complete shutdown of Tucker Carlson re-entering the United States until our country's representatives can figure out what is going on. So as a journalist, it is your job to get the story. But now it is getting to the point where our government doesn't want you to travel to certain countries to get their side of the story, particularly Russia. There have been a number of independent media journalists that have actually traveled to Russia to do a couple of interviews only to be detained when they return home. So for me, I, I wonder, I mean, you know, Tucker Carlson, he's, he's popular. He's well off financially. Maybe they won't come after him. Maybe they won't detain him, but you never know. You never know, but they are heavily coming after him for going to Russia to do that interview. And I'm going to tell you guys, they are very concerned about what that interview may reveal. Now, keep in mind, folks, a lot of people are not paying attention to independent media. If people have been paying attention to independent media, if everybody was watching more of that instead of CNN and MSNBC and Fox News, then people would have understood that the negotiation option was on the table from the very beginning that both countries wanted to try some type of negotiation, but it was actually Joe Biden who said no. And the prime minister of the UK that said no, which means the U S and the UK actually wanted this war to happen. Just like the U S wanted the war in Iraq to happen. And they lied to make sure that it would imagine if we could have heard the other side of the story then and how many lives would have been saved. So these are things that you need to keep in mind. So for me, I kind of look at this as though I want to hear the other side of the story. Do you guys want to hear the other side of the story? But people are calling Tucker Carlson a traitor. They're saying he's a traitor for interviewing Vladimir Putin. What happened to just doing journalism? Hmm. Now I'll show you a funny piece here. Someone sent me this. So did Vlad not say hello to Netanyahu even after sitting down? Now, apparently this is from a couple of years ago. This is in 2020, the world leaders at the fifth world Holocaust forum in Jerusalem in January, 2020. Watch this. You'll notice even here, apparently he was not feeling BB. Watch this. That's Macron. There's uh, King Charles. He's sitting right next to him and doesn't acknowledge him. He leaned over to shake King Charles' hand. 
He is sitting right next to Netanyahu and doesn't even acknowledge that he is there. That was hilarious. It is really interesting. I thought you'd get a kick out of that. But what did you guys think? How did you feel? Let's see the poll result, Eric. Do you think that Tucker Carlson is being a traitor by interviewing Vladimir Putin? Interesting. 1,952 votes. Is Tucker a traitor for interviewing Putin? 4% of you said yes. 91% of you said no. And 5% of you said, I'm not sure. That is interesting. Interesting. Well, one thing is for sure, folks, ladies and gents, I think that this is going to break the internet because I think a lot of people are going to want to see that show. So get ready for that. And then also, like I told you guys, get ready for it. YouTube, actually, yeah, YouTube. And even though Elon Musk said it will be secure on X, I still think all of these platforms are going to be pressured to remove that interview with Vladimir Putin, whether it's X, whether it's YouTube, Rumble might let it slide. Rockfin is usually kind of quiet on that end, but I think they're all going to be pressured to remove it. So my thing is, as soon as that interview is posted on his website, you might want to go ahead and check it out because I don't know how much longer it's going to be allowed to last there. Make no mistake. Elon Musk said he can show it on X, but Elon Musk has also been pressured from outside sources to limit certain information on X as well. X is not a free speech platform, despite what some people may think. So I will say this again to the other commentators. I do not recommend you to show that interview on your show on YouTube because I have a feeling they are going to remove it and you're probably going to get hit. But that being said, I think that as a journalist, you can interview whoever you want. People don't have to watch it. If you have a problem, Aaron, Aaron from CNN, if you have a problem with Tucker Carlson interviewing Vladimir Putin, don't watch it. Jin Psaki, if you have a problem with Tucker Carlson interviewing Vladimir Putin, don't watch it. There, fixed it. Look how easy that was. But what we should not be doing is smearing people, censoring people, and trying to turn people against someone for interviewing someone where you guys dropped the ball. You should have been doing those interviews all this time. Maybe that's why the ratings are so low.